Hi guys, I uh, thought I'd try something a little different today. I've got my big ass screen TV in the background there and uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, show you some footage of all the work that's uh, taking place at uh, Boca Chica uh, down in southern Texas near the border with Mexico by SpaceX working on the next generation uh, Starship. It's quite exciting, they're working on the uh, uh, specifically on SN3, which is the uh, the next prototype that's going to be going into the sky, hopefully very soon, maybe in a week's time. So, pretty exciting stuff. I'll just uh, there. There's the image there, so you can see it all happening in the background there. And um, but before I actually talk about that, uh, which is quite good news. Um, and you'll see how much activity is taken just looking at the background there, just amazing the, uh, the amount of work they're doing. I'll double, do, double up on the speed of that particular NASA feed that they've got down, a local is shooting for them down there. I think it's Boca Chica Mary, I think is the one doing it. I hope I'm giving the right credit there. Um, but they're doing, they give a daily um, uh, feed of the activity down there. I've doubled the speed and I've got about five clips there. It goes about 12 minutes in total. So it's a condensed version of what's happening there. So I uh, hope you find that visually interesting. But uh, I wanted to actually say something a little more um, inspiring. And it's about the, you know, the coronavirus. And things have been pretty tough. You know, I, I'm, I'm not enjoying the, uh, the uh, social isolation that's taking place now. I'd like to go down to the pub and have my Guinness. And it's pissing me off a bit. And um, I'm worried about when I'll next be able to fly, whether I will be able to take the, the trip in August. I've got one planned for August going back to Vietnam. But again, pardon the pun, it is up in the air. I don't even know whether I'll be allowed to take that flight because now all international flights have been cancelled. But just as a little bit of, uh, to put things in perspective, um, I've got this uh, information off the net. I heard this on the radio first off, but I found a, a hard copy of, of the same information here. Now, it's putting things in, into perspective with the corona death rate. Now, the worst death rate, I think, was about the February the 12th in China, and that was 108 persons died on that day. But on the same day, 26,283 people died of cancer, um, 24,641 died of heart disease, 4,300 people died of diabetes, and on that same day, suicide unfortunately took more lives than did the virus by 28 times. So that puts it in perspective. Uh, moreover, uh, mosquitoes kill 2,740 people every day. Humans kill 1,300 fellow humans every day. Oh, that's a wonderful stat. And uh, snakes kill 137 people every day. And I did not know that. Wow. So take a deep breath and uh, wash your hands and, um, and put things in perspective. I think it's a very good way to, to start the day. Another thing I want to talk about is my visit to the, um, uh, to the supermarket yesterday to Woolworths. Um, uh, I, look, there were a lot of empty shelves, as I mentioned earlier, but I couldn't find free-range eggs, for instance. just wanted to get a six-pack because I'm here by myself. I don't need a 12-pack. No, just caged eggs. That's all were there. And uh, I noticed that uh, the... Uh, the tin tuna was quite expensive at about five dollars something the, uh, the the normal one that I buy which is at least a dollar less now I don't know if whether they're profiteering or not although I must say the bread was on special so that was something that still was on special but one thing that got me about when I about my shopping at, at Woolworths yesterday was that there's absolutely no concept of, um, of uh, social distancing it just doesn't seem to be a concept that's sunk into people because when I walked in there, at a choke point, there was, a whole, there was about three staff members right near me when I walked past. I couldn't avoid them. So I was trying to keep a distance from people, but people were everywhere. The other people that were the, the biggest offenders, apart from the staff, were actually the um, uh, European backpackers. Young European backpackers didn't seem to have a clue that this was even happening. And people were standing at the end of aisles. So, I mean, you know, just in strategic spots where you couldn't get around them. Just dumb. People don't think. So I don't want to come in contact with them. I don't want to get close. You know, obviously I want to you know, keep, keep, it, keep my distance. The great irony of this too is a couple of days ago I was looking online at a, a, a Moscovite going into one of their big supermarkets 
and checking out whether there was a shortage of anything. They specifically targeted toilet paper. And wouldn't you know it, there were stacks of toilet paper on the shelves. It was the opposite to what you, you, you'd expect. You know, the good old Soviet Union days, you know, they were, they were a running joke when it came to their, um, their supermarkets. But now it's, it's turned up 180 and there were stacks of varieties of toilet paper and, and the, the, uh, the shelves were full. So, you know, isn't it interesting how things change? So that was something to think about. Yeah, now getting back to what you're actually seeing in the background there, all that, uh, that construction is taking place in Boca Chica, uh, which is, there was nothing there about 6 to, to 12 months ago, but the, the incredible amount of construction work's taking place. Uh, what's happening right now is the SN3, which is the third of the prototypes, the first one exploded because they, they did a pressure test on the... Um, on the fuel tank and it just it couldn't handle it and there was actually a folding part they found out so um, Elon Musk the CEO uh, was not overly impressed I think he gave quite gave him quite a tongue lashing down in, uh, uh, in Boca Chica uh, but now what they've done is they've actually rolled out uh, this should be shown just at the end of this uh, this footage they're rolling out SN3 which is the, uh, the prototype that is going to actually go into the air for a hundred... First off, they'll do a static fire on it. They get the, it's actually just got ended up in the launch pad area and they're going to first have a static fire just to check that the, the engines are fine. They're going to strap three uh, Raptor engines onto it, which will be the first time we've seen that because the previous version of prototypes only had one. And they're going to uh, have a static fire to make sure that the engines are working fine so it won't lift off from the pad. But after that, they'll be doing a 150 metre jump into the air. Uh, but that'll be about it for this particular prototype because they're already working on number four and Elon Musk is determined to have a production line in operation down there and producing, I think he wants to produce at least a couple of starships a week or a day or something ridiculous. He, he's, he's totally committed to, to producing these things en masse and he's looking at producing a hundred starships. So it's quite an ambitious uh, goal he has and it will just totally change the, um, the cost of access to space and you'll start to see space industries flourish once, the, uh, once starships have been proven. Fingers crossed everything goes okay. It's quite an ambitious task he has ahead of him. After the 150 metre uh, hop, the, the SN4, which is currently in, in uh, construction phase, will make it to 20 kilometres in, uh, in the air on a, a, a proving flight. And later in the year, we're hoping to have an orbital flight. So that's what, uh, what's installed. There's a lot of things happening. The, the time frame is incredible compared to the usual time frame when it comes to uh, space uh, development, spaceship development. So very exciting times. So, you know, I want this video to be a bit more optimistic. We're going through a lot of crap with the coronavirus thing. Uh, the other thing I mentioned, wanted to mention is that, that the latest is that, that Morrison's given up totally on, on, um, on getting the, the budget into surplus, spending $130 billion on a stimulus package. It's, uh, it's quite extraordinary. So, um, uh, there's, they're taking it very seriously. They may be going overboard, but uh, I guess it's... it's probably better to do that than, than hold back, uh, but uh, it's a very generous um, uh, aid package and uh, we'll still take a hit with our growth, uh, the country's growth, but at least it'll, it'll hopefully keep people in business, small business especially. We don't want them going under, we want people to still have a livelihood when, when we get over this. And look, it could happen sooner rather than later. There, it appears as if we have flattened out the curve even at this stage and we may be over the worst of it in a week's time. Fingers crossed. If that's the case, they may be able to start easing restrictions in about four weeks or so, hopefully. But uh, I know some states in the US are actually uh, extending the, uh, the shutdown till June, so it's getting quite draconian. And, and, you know, like I say, Spain is just locking people inside and you have to use the excuse of walking a dog so you can get outside. So things could be worse here. They're not too bad. And God knows, thank God I got it all, all sorted out before the uh, crackdown on the, uh, uh, on the social distancing and everything and quarantining because, uh, you know, it's good to have uh, a bit of entertainment at my fingertips. So that's worked out rather well. But 
Look, I, I must admit my mood hasn't been brilliant the last few days. I'm not handling this particularly well. I hope uh, it doesn't last for too long. I think it's going to drive people crazy. Um, I suppose the only thing we do is just get, try to get out and about each day while they still let us. I mean, they can't really stop us from leaving our homes, although the extreme cases in China, apparently they're, um, they're welding people into certain places. I mean, that's just crazy, into, into their apartments. I mean, that's... We don't want anything like that, like that happening, and we're not trying to thank God. And I think after this all, after the dust settles, I think our relationship with China will be a bit more distant than what it was. And I think that'll be the case with a lot of the West. And I think it's a good thing too. I think we got we got far too cosy with them, unless they reform their government and they overthrow the communist regime, in which case it'd be a totally different ball game. Uh, but if we can keep putting pressure on on the, the current regime, I think it's good, and we should. Um, so, uh, but there are certain people in Australia, there's a, an upper house member of uh, parliament in the New South Wales parliament, a Labor member of course, who basically uh, is extolling the virtues of how the Chinese have handled the coronavirus and saying that it, they've done it brilliantly. So you can see the sort of tenor of this type of MP. I think we could do with less of these sorts of people and months that are hopefully more pro-Australian rather than having uh, divided loyalties. Uh, it's a bit of a worry. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give, do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.